Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are going to finish this exciting week off with this bad boy right here. Sine squared of x over x squared from minus infinity to infinity. Then we are going to use the Leibniz rule for integration on this one. If you don't know what it is, link will be in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So here's some first observation. I call this integral i, because why the hell not? And also, this is an even integral, so if we plug in x into, uh, minus x into here, that would just give us the original integral. So we can also rewrite this as 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine squared of x over x squared dx. So that's nice and fine, but what can we do with that? So we want to use the Leibniz rule for integration on this one, so that means we, we have to introduce a new parameter. We are going to call it t, because I'm a physicist. So, let some um, um, i in terms of t be equal to, um, okay, we are going to leave this 2 out for now. So this is now the integral from 0 to infinity of sine t times x over x squared, and the sine also squared dx. And as you might notice, e in terms of t equals to 1 is half times i. So, we need to use this fact later. So that's just a little observation. So i in terms of t equals to 1 is equal to i over 2. Okay, that's great. Now we want to differentiate this right here in terms of t. So that's our next step. So d i in terms of t, dt is nothing else than d dt, this integral from 0 to infinity of sine squared tx over x squared dx. And now we want to use the Leibniz rule. Our upper and lower bounds are independent of t, that means we can use the special case and can interchange the integral sign and also the differential. So that means that this is now the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative in terms of t, sine squared t times x over x squared dx. And 1 over x squared is just a constant in terms of this t right here, so we only need to differentiate sine squared of tx. And differentiating that is quite easy. Take a piece of paper, try it for yourself. We end up with the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 over x squared. And this right now is just 2 times x sine tx cosine tx dx. And you might notice something. This squared and this x cancels out, and we can bring a 2 to the front, but we don't need to, because it will be quite useful. This right here, 2 times sine of tx, cosine of tx, is the double angle formula for the sine, so that's quite important. So what we end up with is the integral from 0 to infinity of sine 2 times t times x over x dx. And this is quite great. And remember, this is i prime of t now. So we want to go back to i of t later on. But you might notice something. This right here is a Dirichlet integral for the third time now. I've already destroyed it two times. Today, the third time. That's why I didn't use this Feynman integration for it. Up until now, I wanted to include it here. So we have to do this integration, uh, differentiation under the integral sign for a second time. So that means we have to introduce a new parameter, and I'm going to call it, um, it doesn't quite matter, we can call it a, for example. So, let i of a be nothing else than the integral from 0 to infinity of sine 2 t times x over x times e to the minus ax dx. <coughs> it's most of the time just luck to find the right parameterization. So, it happens to be the right parameter, parameterization for um, this integral to use e to the minus ax. We are using this minus sign to make the whole thing converge. That's the only reason. Okay, so how can we proceed in this case? <coughs> As before, we want to um, differentiate that. And here's only a little observation. We want to go back to i prime of t later on. But what is i prime of t? i prime of t is nothing else than i in terms of a 
at the point <coughs> a equals to zero in this case. So keep that in mind. Okay, now we want to differentiate that and see what we end up with. So di in terms of a, da is nothing else than d, da of this integral from zero to infinity, sine 2t times x over x e to the minus ax dx. As before, upper and lower bound are independent of a in this case, so we can just interchange <coughs> the integral sign and the differential. Sorry, I'm still um, ill. <laughs> I call flu. I'm sorry for that. So let's interchange that. This is now the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative in terms of a sine 2t times x over x e to the minus ax dx. And this term right here is independent of a, so we could bring it to the front of the differential. So we only have to differentiate this right here. And that's quite easy to be honest. This is now the integral from 0 to infinity of minus. Okay, what do we get? So this is minus x sine 2t times x over x e to the minus ax dx. And what we can do, we can cancel out this and this, and all we end up with is this right here. And also, if you like, we can change the order of integration on this one um, by distributing the minus sign into here. Let's do this on the next blackboard. Let us continue this fun ride. Okay, so it should be obvious to you guys we have to use integration by parts on this one. That's the easiest way. So let's go ahead and do this. And we only need to do this for two steps. So we need something to differentiate and something to integrate, or we get your plus, minus, and plus. Okay, so at first, we can indeed um, differentiate, for example, sine 2tx. <coughs> what do we end up with when we differentiate in terms of x? Well, this is just 2 times t times the cosine of 2t times x, and differentiating this twice gives us um, minus 4t squared times the sine 2t times x. And we want to integrate e to the minus ax right here. e to the minus ax will give us 1 over minus a, e to the minus ax. And this will give us 1 over a squared, e to the minus ax. Okay, and to finish things up, we need to multiply this together and this together. And after that, we will see what we get. <laughs> and we also have to apply the others. So this is now sine 2t times x over minus a, e to the minus ax from infinity to zero. Notice that I changed the upper and lower bounds on this one using the minus sign. Okay, next step. Um, we get, we have a negative sign, so this is minus 2 times t cosine 2tx over a squared e to the minus ax from infinity to zero. And here's one last observation that will make things um, work out nicely. We need to take the integral of this right here. So this is something we need to do. But that looks familiar. That nearly looks like our integral right here. Um, I prime of a. Only with some small factor of minus 4t squared over a squared. So this integral right here is nothing else. So we can um, subtract 4t squared over a squared I prime of a. I hope you could see where this came from. So this is just the first step, and now let's evaluate the limits right here. Okay, so if we plug in 0 into here, our sign will go to 0, so this is just 0. If we plug infinity into here, well, this doesn't go anywhere, but if we plug infinity into this um, x right here, we will just end up with e to the minus infinity, that's 1 over infinity, and this is 0. So this whole thing will just be 0 in the end. And if we plug in 0 into here, this will give us um, cosine of 1 in this case, so um, this will just be 1, so that's great. Um, so this term in terms of 0 is just 2t over a squared, and if we plug infinity into here, it will just vanish once again. So this will vanish, and this term will become minus, and let's see, this is um, 2t over a squared. <coughs> okay. And what we want to do now, we want to add this term to this side right here, once again, to get um, an expression for i prime of a. So, 
what can we conclude? We know I prime of A, and then we have one time I prime of A here, so this is 1 plus 4t squared over a squared, and all in all we can bring this together, so this is a squared plus 4t squared over a squared, and this is equal to minus 2t over a squared. Okay, nice and fine. How can we continue? Now we want to divide everything by this term, that should be obvious. So our final answer for i prime of a is nothing else than minus 2t over a squared, and then over a squared plus 4t squared over a squared. You might notice a squared and a squared we cancel out. So we have minus 2t over a squared plus 4t squared. <laughs> and now we have an expression for i prime of a. So that was a long way to go. And now we want to integrate i prime of a to go back to our original i of a somehow. So let's do this. We are almost done, my boys. Like I said before, we want to integrate this now. And I want to rewrite this expression a little bit to make things more clear. This little expression right here is nothing else than 2 times t, but the whole thing squared. You will see why I'm doing this in a second. And now we want to integrate i prime of a. So, let us integrate i prime of a dA. This will give us something, but we want to apply limits to this integral right here. So remember guys, we want to go back to i prime of t. So what was i prime of t? Well, that's nothing else than i of a at the point zero. So let's apply a limit, that's called zero, right here. And also, it would be nice to make the other part vanish. So how can we make things vanish? If we want our i of a to vanish, we want a to approach infinity, so that makes e to the minus infinity, that's 1 over infinity, and this is 0. So if we let a approach infinity, that would make our original integral vanish. So it's the integral from 0 to infinity of i prime of a dA. And we end up with i when a approaches infinity. And like I just said, this will just be 0, so that would be great. And minus i when a is equal to 0. But what is that? Well, that would just be our i prime in terms of t in this case. Okay, let's do this. So now let's apply that to the integral. So this is the integral from 0 to infinity of minus 2t over a squared plus 2t but squared dA. And this right here is just the inverse tangent, so we can bring those two constants to the outside, minus 2t. And this will just be the inverse tension of something. If you don't know where this comes from, take a look in the description. So, this right now is just minus 2t <coughs> over uh, 2t, so times 1 over 2t. That's this part right here from the inverse tension, times the inverse tension of a over 2t from 0 to infinity. Whew. This and that will just be 1 in this case. And if we let the inverse tension approach infinity on this one right here. Well, when does the tension go to infinity? When our a would be pi over 2 in this case. And at 0, the inverse tension of 0 is just 0, so that would vanish. So we end up with um, minus pi over 2. And that's really nice. So that was our observation. So this is equal to minus i prime of t. We can get rid of the minus right here. So i prime of t is nothing than pi over 2. But remember, we wanted to go back to our original i that we wanted to find out, and there was one relationship. <coughs> we, uh, we know that um, i is nothing else than 2 times i of t, um, but t at 1. So there was our condition right here. Sorry for that. I'm improvising this stuff, so I still have to think about it a bit while doing the video. Okay, so that's great. So that means we just need to integrate this right here, and then we are almost done. Okay, so our next step that will conclude everything, so the integral of i prime of t, in terms of t. And just like before, we want to integrate this with an upper and lower bound. One bound we already know, t equals to 1. So let's place it here, and the other bound, well, 
If we let t be zero right here, that means that's sine squared of zero and this is just zero. So that's nice. So that would make things vanish. And this is fundamental theorem of calculus, just one uh, i at the point t equals to one minus i at t equals to zero. This is zero, and this right here is just i over two. The thing we want to find out. Well, and what does it give us if we integrate this right here? So that's the integral from zero to one of pi over two dt. Well, this just gives us pi over two times t from 0 to 1, and this is just pi over 2. Last little thing that we are done. So, i over 2 is nothing else than pi over 2. So, all we need to do is multiply both sides by 2, and this will give us the result for our original integral i. So, we know if we multiply this by 2, original integral i will just be pi. That was a great rhyme, and then we are done. That was fun. I really like this. I really like feminine integration, differentiation, under the integral sign, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> My throat hurts really bad. I'm sorry for that. If you did enjoy this video, if you did enjoy this whole week, then please like and subscribe, recommend me to your friends, share wherever you want. I would appreciate it really, really much, very much, whatsoever. And if you want to support me a bit more, take a look in the description. I will be linked to my Patreon. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. Thank you for your great support, guys. See ya!